And welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. We are still live. It is 9.51 Central Time. And we just watched the, the vice presidential debate. I got to say it was a lot more entertaining than I had anticipated. I, I, thought, think, I thought it was even a better debate than the presidential debate. I thought it was more substantial. I thought it was more policy focused. And I didn't feel like it got lost in the polarization of the two candidates' characters. I thought uh, Pence did an amazing job pivoting back. He was kept getting uh, trying to get roped in there, triggered there with those buzzwords that you could tell Tim Kaine had just practiced really hardcore in the debates. And, you know, OK, well, whenever he actually starts talking about actual issues, just pivot back to racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia. Like, get over it. I, and I think that that really exposed the platform that they're working with for the American people. It's almost like if you continue to say that so many times, you're exposing yourself. And, and, and Pence was just calm. He stuck to the issues. He pointed out how, uh, you know, they, they're the party that's working on insults. Well, and that is a uh, psychological tactic, actually, to say the same thing over and over and over and over and over and then eventually it just catches on. It just becomes a truth, whether it, it is real or not. And, you know, the last question, I wanted to make a comment on this, Leanne. The question was, what would your party do or what will your ticket do in order to try to ease this polarization that's been so apparent in this election cycle? And, you know, I, I would say this. They say that the um, United States is divided right now, and, and I would actually agree. But I would make the case that the Trump campaign and that Donald Trump supporters and this movement that we've witnessed has actually been extremely inclusive. It has actually brought the nation together. I got to say, following the Trump campaign, going to these events, I have met some of the most unbelievable people. Honestly, I can't I, I can sit here and think about all these people I've met on the road, on flights, Donald Trump supporters, some of the most unbelievable people from every uh, ethnicity, from every racial background, from every color, every social economic background, everything. Just amazing people. It's been a very um, united front right. um, from my experience uh, being a Donald Trump supporter and following this campaign. So I would make the argument that if this truly is a nation divided um, which I would agree it is. Mm -hmm. I would by say design. that I would say exactly. I would say that this is a nation divided by media and by lies. Okay, mm -hmm. not by this election cycle. And if most people knew the truth about Donald Trump, and even he's not a perfect candidate, I'm not up here saying that. Right. But a lot of the rhetoric spewed from Tim Kaine tonight is the Democrat lies mm -hmm. that the mainstream media has been trying to perpetrate on this election. And uh, this entire political campaign cycle since it started. So it's very important. If we're going to talk about this country being divided, it's the same thing we see with Black Lives Matter. We need to get down to the root of the division. That's what we need to get down to. Well, I, I agree with you. And, you know, I think they did a really great job at kind of putting that out there that look what you're dealing with there. Like I said, it's like you point that finger and you got three fingers pointing back at you. And I think uh Tim Kaine really proved that point tonight. I see Margaret the Howell Grinch. there in the studio. Yeah, the, the Grinch. Uh, he totally looked like that. Margaret, what did you think about this debate? So many points where, you know, Pence, he seems so earnest and so genuine. And we saw Kane really weaseling uh, throughout the entire mm -hmm. thing. He was kind of nervous, you know, scribbling on his paper when Triggered. Pence was talking okay. about his faith. Correct. And, you know, we've already seen uh, CNN, the Clinton News Network, have been following their updates uh, they've already jumped on Kane's bad bandwagon. They're calling Trump a fool or a maniac who could start a nuclear war. Well, let's think about this. It was Clinton who indicted the Russians, you know, wanting to take military action because of an alleged cyber attack. And Pence really called her out. You know, she, he said that you're the architect of Obama's foreign policy. Well, let's take a look at that foreign policy. And it's been one gigantic, massive failure after another. So if we want to avoid a nuclear war, a nuclear confrontation with, with states like Russia, it would make sense that we wouldn't have a political hothead who wants to have military action uh, with a superpower over a, an alleged cyber attack with no proof. I mean, this is plain and simple. Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she would want to take military action against that. Let's not forget it was Bill Clinton who gave North Korea the nuclear centrifuges um, under the same sort of thing we see with this Iran deal that, well, they would have to promise to let our people in to go and just check and make sure they're not building any nukes with those centrifuges. Oh, 
a lot of good that did because North Korea said, no, you're not going to come in and, right. and see what we're up to here. And that's the same thing that's happening again with Iran. And I mean, it's like history repeats itself, but they think that we're total idiots and that we're not going to you know, see past this. Kane also said that Clinton would stop or that she has stopped the Iranian nuclear weapons program. Where's the proof in that? All that we know is that there are their banking sanctions have been lifted. They have 1.7 billion of our dollars now, and they're, they're still en route to building a nuclear weapon. So, you know, he's making one false statement after another, after another. And that one is really, you know, two years down the line. Let's fact check that. But let's not forget, Kane, he says what's right in the moment, in the moment. He's the one that said that Bill Clinton should be forced to resign over Monica Lewinsky. He said that. It's on the record. Where's that Kane? Where was that Kane tonight? It's like he says whatever is politically convenient for him at the time. Right. Yeah, and, you know, it's also, I remember this was a year or more ago, there was an Iranian leader, maybe it was a imam, or I'm not sure who it was, but he said that Iran is going to have a new place in the new world order. Mm -hmm. It was one of the most powerful speeches. It was, I mean, it was Such honestly, a globalist. It, was kind of, it was kind of frightening, honestly, uh, hearing this. He was basically saying, we are now a world superpower. <laughs> We're going to go nuclear. And it's, Thanks, it's, Obama. It's well known that Iran is the, the number one terror state in the world. And mm -hmm. now Obama is basically opening the doors for them to build themselves into a nuclear power, then who knows what they'll do with that power. They Just, said, again, like I said, they said we will have a new right. place in the new world and, order. And he promises that they're going to let us in to inspect that they're, you know, what they're doing in their country. Meanwhile, these are people that say they're chanting every day that they want to... Death to America. Death to America. That's just their culture. Mm -hmm. It's just, They're so peaceful. He also called out Saudi Arabia. And he miss, He actually flat out lied. He said that Trump would give the Saudis the nuclear capability, that he wanted to enhance their nuclear capability. And, well, we know that Clinton is in the pocket of Saudi Arabia. Trump is not. You know, one false accusation after another, very baseless. And it really caught me. The one thing that really struck me with Kane tonight, how disrespectful he was. Every time Pence would talk, he would try to cut him off, interject strong arm himself into a conversation that he really you know had no business being in he wouldn't even allow him to finish a statement and then scribbling like a mad little second grader <laughs> you know when he couldn't get a word in it was just very bizarre very bizarre yeah. behavior yeah i don't like him his energy at all <laughs> a major major grinch vibes coming from that one <laughs> margaret stay there because we're going to take calls and if you want to interject with anything uh feel free so let's go ahead to the board here. I want to take the first call from Jack in Indianapolis. Uh, he, he thinks the mainstream media totally downplayed this debate. Pence was kicking butt. Um, I feel like Margaret kind of nailed it, too. Anytime that Pence was kicking butt, uh, Tim Kaine would interrupt him so he could kind of get a handle on the conversation. And now we've got the, the, the mainstream media doing the exact same thing. Go ahead, Jack my call um yeah right before the uh, debate uh, i was watching bill o'reilly and they were kind of downplaying the, pre the vice president uh, debate and i i think uh that actually in this case where they were saying that in the past there's no the vice president of eight that never uh swayed the anybody's vote or didn't really play a a, a big uh, uh play into the the overall election i think actually pence uh, did an excellent job uh, kind of defending Trump, but actually staying on the ground, focusing on policies. Why right. you know, the Hillary side is basically focusing on a lot of the, the things that aren't really issues that we really care about. Um, the other thing I think is that um, you know we know Trump is a maverick. Uh, he's uh, and a lot of it is because he's a promoter. His personality is what he's done his whole career, and I think he, he'll make a great president because he'll be able to promote our country. But he needs a straight man like. Uh, Pence to be able to offset him, and I think Pence kind of demonstrated to a lot of people that don't know him that uh, he is he's very sound politically, he's very calm, and I, I think he's a great second uh, second in command. The other thing you got to think about is, you know, if anything ever happened to Trump, which one of those candidates do you want running the country? And uh, I would definitely want Pence in charge, um, as he's got the the poise, the experience, and the leadership. To, to head up the country. Absolutely. I agree with you, Jack. Uh, thank you so much. And yeah, I mean, I was really thinking that when I was watching this debate tonight, like how calm Pence was. And he truly came across as someone that I feel people could empathize with across the board. Um, whereas with Kane, he just has that kind of smarmy, slimy, 
Yeah, just think about him. Disgusting. He's going to smile and shake your Deplorable. hand. Deplorable. As he stabs you in the back. I got to say, just to keep it simple, I was extremely impressed with Mike Pence. I thought he was unbelievable. I thought he was great. It blew my expectations. I agree. I thought it was going to be boring, and it was not. Jack, thank you so much. We're going to move on to the next caller. Uh, Warren in Atlanta, you also want to talk about uh, Pence's performance. Yeah, I thought uh, Mike Pence did extremely well tonight. Uh, I was definitely impressed by him. And uh, I just I feel like this is uh, different than any vice presidential debate we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it was definitely more entertaining than the uh, debate with Trump and Hillary. And I feel like Mike Pence is just the right person to uh, attack Hillary on the policies that Trump didn't cover during the first debate. Um, Trump was so caught up with having to defend himself from the biased media that Mike Pence really had more chances to talk about you know different scandals and policies. And, and Tim Kaine was just. So beta male tonight, talking like he was like a playground guy on uh, in kindergarten, almost like a little kid. <laughs> whereas Pence was just very uh, gentlemanlike, very calm and collected, and he delivered his points uh, very well. But I was definitely frustrated when the moderator would cut him off every single time he brought up the emails or the Clinton Foundation. Right. And I just uh, infuriates me because it just further confirms that point that we are all fighting against the media. The nation divided is the political elite and the media against the people. It's not divided by each other. It's divided against the tyrannical government and Donald Trump and Mike Pence and their, their ticket and all the people that support him. And so I just really thought it was a great debate tonight. Um, and I look forward to the next debate on Sunday. I hope Trump will be much harder on Clinton. And uh, I just feel like this gave uh, his campaign a great boost. Yeah, I agree. And I, I thought, you know, uh, Mike Pence is a very good kind of counterpoint to Trump's personality. But Warren, what did you think about um, how Kane kept saying, we have a plan, our plan, as if Hillary Clinton actually cares about what he wants to bring to the table. She's got her own agenda. She, he's just kind of along for the ride, whereas Pence kept saying Trump Trump has a plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tim Kaine, I think, is just another vessel for Hillary Clinton to get in her words in the media and in the debate where Mike Pence, I just saw, he really held his own. He defended Trump, but he wasn't really... Uh, repeating Trump's words and, and kind of rehearsing these scripted lines. He was really his own man during the debate, and uh, Kane was just kind of another Clinton crony. And yeah. he kept mentioning things about, we have a plan, we have a plan. And he mentioned things like, uh, you know, Hillary made alliances. She did make alliances with people donating to her Clinton Foundation. You know, she right. had a plan for all, all, all sorts of things like that. But we all know that they're all under the table, you know, big money corporations. They're not for the benefit of the American people. And I just love how Pence was so uh, clear on that, and he wasn't going to tolerate those kinds of uh, rehearsed lines from Kane. Every time he mentioned that, he would come back with, well, yeah, the Iran deal or the emails, and obviously he'd get cut off. But I just really felt like, uh, yeah, it was just very scripted. It was very rehearsed, and uh, I really think that um, Pence definitely won that debate. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Warren. Great points. And the uh, proof is already coming in that Mike Pence won this debate hands down. Really, you just had to watch it uh, to <laughs> understand that that happened. But uh, to all these dip crap celebrities that are going on social media right now, admonishing Donald Trump, who wasn't even on the debate stage. I mean, I, look, I'm about, I'm about to get really frustrated because these celebrities actually have uh, power of the mind over some of these weak-minded Americans. But honestly, you are the most disgusting people, uh, people like... Jesse Tyler Ferguson, you're just a, you know what, I'm not even going to waste my time talking about you. But here's what yeah, we got. Is that? Here's what we got. Hillary Clinton tweets out after the debate concludes, she says that she is proud of Tim Kaine. And then, of course, she asks for $5. You know, she's got to take a little bit of your money, too. But she says she's proud of Tim Kaine after the debate, asked for $5. That tweet has 3,000 likes. Donald Trump tweeted, I'm proud of Mike Pence. He did a great job. We should all, all be proud of Mike Pence. Uh, he did not ask for money. And um, that tweet actually received almost 500, uh, I'm sorry, 50,000, 50, over 50,000 already. This just shows you, folks, we are not going to let them steal this debate. Nobody likes you, Hillary Clinton. Nobody <laughs> likes you, Hillary Clinton. All these stupid nitwit celebrities who go on social media and think they have control over this country, your time is over.
50,000 people liked Mike Pence's debate tonight. 3,000 likes. Oh, oh, wait, she's up to 14,000 now. Hillary Clinton's got 14,000 <laughs> likes saying that she likes Tim Kaine's performance tonight. Donald Trump with Mike Pence up over 50,000. We are not going to let these thieves steal this the election. presidency again. We are done with you. <laughs> Triggered. <sighs> Did you just get triggered by Hillary Clinton's tweets? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know what? I think that you you do bring up a very valid point, though, is that you, we can clearly see the minds of the people. They are in such support of Donald Trump. I mean, that's evident if we could have polls in real time with the people in real time, sort of like we have these likes or shares or people following you, if that could be somehow proven at the polls. That's why they say, you know, you got to get out. You got to vote early. Make sure you, if your state uh, participates in early voting, get out there and participate in early voting. That's one of the main ways that we could stop them from stealing this election. All of these zero intelligence celebrities going on Twitter saying, uh, Mike Pence couldn't defend Donald Trump's words. I could make up a bunch of lies about you right now, Leanne. And then I wouldn't expect somebody to stand up for how can you stand up to a bunch of lies? I mean, right. it's, they're, they're completely well, unfounded and then of course, statements. So then that makes him want to have to waste his two minutes with a rebuttal on lies. And it's like, I know I don't want to waste my he didn't two take minutes. Debate. Exactly. And and of course, Hillary Clinton liked Tim Kaine's performance tonight because he was a good little puppy and said the exact same things that she did, just like she told him to coach him to. Whenever he tries to say something that's going to make sense and, and actually get to the heart of the issues this country is facing, hit him with the racism. Hit him with the sexism. I mean, psh, verbatim. You know, it's you guys sad. Are so busted. It's, can we, is there anyone we can like anymore? Is, is there anybody left in Hollywood, in professional sports, anywhere that has a brain in their head that isn't a complete shill for the establishment? I mean, this is pathetic. I, these celebrities in America, this is why people look down on the country, because all these celebrities with an IQ of three are what we put out for the rest of the world to think that this is our intelligence level. It's really sick. I'm sorry. I got triggered you by got Jesse triggered. Tyler Ferguson <laughs> on uh, ABC's is. Modern Family. Ooh, oh. <laughs> Some intellectual on Modern Family. Uh, get out of here with your stupid little TV show. Let's take another call. God. Well, uh, here I got a tweet from Mak Makeda. She said, all Tim Kaine did during the entire VP debate was lie, whine, hurl insults, and interrupt Mike Pence. And that is absolutely the truth. And that is how the Democrats run their thing all the time, is they lie, they hurl insults. Like you said, they think that the, the mind of the voter, that's how stupid we are, that all we want to hear is just you throwing jabs and this and that. We don't want to hear where you really stand on the issues. And right there, it kind of underscored that that that's the platform they run on in tonight's Ooh. debate. Oh, but the actor Sean Patrick Thomas said <laughs> that Tim Kaine won and Hillary Clinton retweeted it. Who's He's that? a celebrity. Who's uh. Sean Patrick Thomas? Uh. Who are the who are you following? Uh. How are you getting these This is this is what Hillary Clinton is retweeting. This is like, you know, oh, it's Hillary like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Her big you know, it's supporters. Like, I just, I'm sorry. I can't even deal with this anymore. Can All we right, take let's another go, call let's before go to I blow up? Call. <laughs> Brendan in California. You're out there with all of these Hollywood superstars that are being uh, retweeted by Hillary Clinton. Uh, go ahead, Brendan. What did you think about the debate? Um, I think Tim Kaine, he's a horrible candidate. He's just a puppet. Uh, Mike Pence totally smoked him, and then he's going to sit there and lie and interrupt like he's a little child. And then he's going to say that Hillary Clinton is the only one that stood up for women's rights in China. Like, really? Are you serious? Do you, can you hear your own lies, bud? It's like these Democrats are so disgusting nowadays. No, it's, I mean, it, it is. It's disgusting. It's like just mudslinging, uh, throwing jabs, throwing lies, and then saying that it's the other party who is the one that's running on insults. Or digging up things from decades ago, which Donald Trump had every right to say that lady was Miss Piggy or whatever, gained a little weight because he was in charge of the freaking beauty pageant. It's all yeah, about objectification. She said, thank you. Wait, wait. Oh, What's uh, wrong with that? Donald Trump said a mean name? Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, oh. Hillary Clinton just murdered it and plundered the whole, her whole political career. Let's but stop. Donald Trump said a name. Oh. Let's drop weapons to the Syrian rebels. Oh, what to Libya, you know? It's like, come on. Like, this is going to be the same thing. These people just try to do anything, try to distract people. It's like, really, they think Democrats, most of Democrats are a bunch of morons. And I feel bad for people 
people that support Hillary. I, I feel really bad for him. Like, you guys aren't awake. What's what's going on? Are you guys that slow? Well, and the thing that is just so infuriating is that these people feel bad for us. Like, I have a, a, a an acquaintance <laughs> who texted me out of the blue. You know, I didn't even know who it was. I didn't have their number in my phone anymore. And, and she was like, well, what do you think about Trump? And I'm like, Trump's great. And she's like, really? Oh, my God. Why? And then I just explained why. And I haven't heard from her since because that's you shut them down with facts. And then then they go and make fun of you as if you're the crazy person because you don't agree that Trump is a racist, sexist, xenophobic, insane guy that shouldn't have his hand on the nuclear button. I haven't met one Hillary supporter out here where I live in California yet. And it's wow. Like in, uh, I live in a predominantly uh, Latin, uh, Hispanic uh, area of town, and they're all for Trump because they know that means jobs. Exactly. And, and and these people are just so slow. It's like, come on, like wake up, guys. What's going on? It's like you see what this lady is. She's about to die anyways. It's like, come on. She can't even get in her own van. She has to be picked up and thrown in there. And then you have her little puppet trying to distract like he's a little kid, just interrupting every two minutes, and the guy can't even get his point across. So he lost just from doing that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for holding it down out there in California. You know, we right see <laughs> we see with uh, Mark Dice and his reports and everything, but I know there are a lot of people out there in California, even people in Hollywood, who would love to see a Trump-Pence presidency, a Trump-Pence win. Uh, so thank you, Brendan, out there in California. Um, you have a good night. You too. Good night. Margaret, what do you think about what the caller just said? Well, I agree. I agree with him. I can't stop uh, uh, smiling at Owen. I'm, I'm waiting for him to jump on the desk. We're cutting <laughs> you off. I love your enthusiasm, buddy, but no coffee after 930. Like, I'm I haven't had any coffee off. today. This is sheer passion he's running on. I can agree <laughs> with you. I'm reading these tweets, Leanne, and people are making excellent points about what type of moron Kane is because, you know, his biggest religious conviction was not supporting the death penalty, but he supports taxpayer-funded abortion, which that seems really legit. It looks like he'd be across the board on one thing. You know, if you're going to, you know, kind of, it doesn't really make a lot of sense in his policies. You know, it's just, what is he saying exactly? Where's the religious standard with him? Well, that's like when Hillary Clinton says that she's going to increase taxes on the wealthy and that that's going to help the middle class. Mm -hmm. What? There is literally, there is, there is no proof, there is no reasoning, there is no logic behind that at all. That's insinuating that you're going to take money from the rich and just give it to the middle class. Of course, that's not <laughs> right. how it works. Well, and, and also, too, she was pressed on her tax plan where they said, are you really not going to raise taxes on the middle class? Truth. And she's like, well, I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best to stick to that promise. Like, okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're a lying. And yeah, you, I'm going to try my best not idiots. to lie. Because nope. <laughs> Kane just made the argument that he's going to with more government and more taxes. You know, guys, we, we joke about this, but people are really hurting in this country. You know, we see people working two and three jobs under this administration. Where are the jobs that he promised? You know, we've seen Trump create thousands of jobs in this country. Give me a single, you know, example of a job that Hillary Clinton has created uh, that hasn't involved taxpayer money to do so. It's 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 a strange little setup. You know, all these lies and accusations he's going to raise taxes on the middle class. That's what Kane said about Trump. Where's the proof in this, buddy? It's like no facts. I, you know, I'm looking at, at CNN's fact checker. The only thing that they have to say, you know, about the fact checking is that Pence didn't know where the VP debate was being held. Well, that's not true. You know, that's the best that they can come up with. It, it's it, it's just pathetic. Oh, and jump on the desk. No. <laughs> this is a nice desk, okay? This is not a deplorable desk. This is a nice Trump-supporting desk. We don't need to jump on the desk just yet. If Hillary Clinton wins, maybe that we'll might call for it. We'll all be jumping on the desk, and then we'll all be probably moving and to Canada. And ripping our hair out. Ugh. Exactly, exactly. You know, nothing gets me hotter also than, than these celebrity nitwits who come out with their failed logic, you know, they're they're almost brain dead. I'm with you on that, Owen. I think that, you know, they just need to sit down and shut up. Just make some movies and let the experts handle the rest of it. Well, and we've already covered it in, in depth of how the White House owns Hollywood. And so whoever is in power, in control, I mean, they're actually visiting these studios and talking to the writers saying, inject this agenda into your television show. So it's like you can't even escape this stuff because the propaganda is everywhere. So we don't really care what these Hollywood shills 
have to say. And we need the ones who are on the side of liberty to stop being so freaking scared of getting your next job. You're going to lose the country. We're all going to lose out on this. And no one's going to have the money to go Go to your stupid movie. Go to your eighteen dollar theater ticket movie. Exactly. Yeah, with Which your is vibrating garbage seats. anyway. Do we really want any more propaganda? I certainly don't. I can't remember the last time I went to a movie. I think it was Star Wars. But that aside, you know, I suffered through that. My point being, these <laughs> these idiotic celebrity types, you know, it just wow, just wow, looking right. at these tweets. I'm gonna come they back have, with some more. <laughs> well, yeah, and they have no idea what the average person is is going through in this country. So people don't really care what you have to say, Leonardo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. in your private jet with they a carbon footprint the size of a small country. And shut and, up. And Chelsea Clinton, for that matter, lecturing over over you know climate change and and our effects on climate. Meanwhile, she's traveling around in a private jet, burning fuel like there's no tomorrow it's right. like get by herself bicycle if you really feel that way she, she has a, a charters a private jet to fly alone 300 miles away <laughs> to go talk about climate change it's like we are sick wow. and tired of you guys lecturing us you total mm -hmm. hypocrites mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna move on to the next caller amber in idaho and she seems to agree with this clinton campaign just their argument it's 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 totally basic now. We've broken it down, and we can see their plans and how they operate. Amber, go ahead. Hi. So the main thing that I noticed from the debate is Kane and Clinton are exactly the same. Right. The only points that they can find that are valid are, oh, he's sexist, racist, basically Hitler, because he respects Putin. No, literally Hitler. Or, or just yeah, a complete exactly. lie. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I love how you had to pull up the... I love how he had to go there and, and pull up the Russian agent. Oh, you know, he's a Russian agent. How dare he uh, say that Putin is a better leader than Obama? So, I know. And all he said was that Putin is well respected in his country by his people. And like, what about Obama? They won't even put stairs down on the airplane. Right. Like, we need respect from other countries. Our leaders need respect. Right. If we don't have the respect, then like, if Clinton gets in, we're definitely going to a war with Russia. Probably multiple other countries, too. Yeah. But, like, the whole debate, Kane basically used it to spew their lies, to play on people's emotions and relying on the, like, idea that everyone's dumbed down and not going to fact check them. Oh, I get so angry. <laughs> Amber, were you, so when, when you heard these weaponized words that the Democrats have weaponized over, you know, at least the last decade, probably much longer, but these weaponized words that people are so triggered by, now they have to have safe spaces. How do you feel? Like, what does that do to you just out there listening as someone who can see beyond the programming? Like, what? <laughs> it gets me so mad. Like, I literally <laughs> feel like Alex Jones looks when he's on the news. Like, <laughs> he's talking about things that gets him all passionate. <gasps> <him>. like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I totally get it. Like, you can't just listen to this crap and not like get just outraged because it's so ridiculous yeah like people are waking up more and more every day and they can't just keep relying on the fact that everyone's gonna just accept that oh my god if he's racist he can't be our leader like oh what about hillary like <clears throat> just like the list of things that king mentioned that hillary's done since she's been in politics like what about the gigantic list of all the illegal things that she's done to like just all these horrible things i know catch you on it but it's out in the open yeah no one's we're not allowed to talk about that though amber the those that's just a vast right-wing conspiracy do you know that hillary clinton was out there <laughs> on television talking to the american people knowing that her husband is caught in all of these sex scandals all these affairs she's out there um psychologically abusing these women ruining their lives yet she goes out onto the national television and calls it a vast right-wing conspiracy. So that's how long she's been lying to the public. She knows what's going on behind closed doors. She knows her husband is embroiled in all of this. But yet she's just, it's let's just all calm down. It's just another vast. I mean, she has been lying to the American people for decades. And then they dare say that they're running on a platform for women I'm um, trying to say Trump objectifies women, but nobody is allowed to talk about Bill Clinton being a rapist, except for all of you info warriors out there who are now taking it to the, the live television programming and getting that message out there that they refuse to report on. Amber, thank you so much for chiming in and watching the VP debate with us tonight. 
appreciate Thank all you. your appreciate all and your you talking points. Great. By the way, about the whole celebrity things and stuff, I think you guys are the real celebrities. You're real people. You're doing great things. Like you're performing an actual public service. What do celebrities do? They act and lie and sing. And enter Ooh. entertain <laughs> us while our world is burning into ashes. And that's it. They're going to exactly. keep on playing as the Titanic goes down. And, and that's the. I think that that's you know a serious question that we need to address. I mean, are these are these celebrities really that stupid? Okay, maybe they're that stupid. All right, whatever. We got <laughs> stupid people out there. I hope they don't control the narrative. Or are they controlled operatives in the new world order? That's the question people need to start looking into. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, are these people really that stupid? The, you know, like LeBron no, James comes out and endorses Hillary Clinton, says that Hillary Clinton is going to be good for the inner cities. LeBron is a guy who dribbles a ball for a living, okay? <laughs> He's not exactly the smartest guy on earth. So I don't know, LeBron, if you've been looking at the inner cities run by Democrats, but they haven't been doing so well. Right. Sorry, you're a nitwit. Yeah, you're... <laughs> You are absolutely right about that. But, you know, but here's the thing. I think if you asked most people, if you asked most celebrities, do you want more liberty? They would say yes. So what do we do here at InfoWars? We try to sift through all the propaganda. We try to sift through all the misinformation. And we try to present to you an opinion that is based in fact. Now, we might have a, differ, a different opinion, but we're trying to base it in fact. And, and, and that's the issue to me when... I see all of these celebrities or all these social justice warriors, all these Trump haters going on social media, going out in the streets, doing their little protest, and it's all based on lies. It's all based on misinformation. I mean, what do you do with these people? You got to get the fluoride shell off their pineal gland. Okay, well, I think I'm, I'm going to need someone to um, get, get, get to the Photoshop and put this out so we can retweet it, but... This is Laura Ingram, and she has tweeted out, this is Tim Kaine getting ready in the dressing room. So, is that's, Tim Kaine, yeah. is this Tim Kaine, or is he the Grinch? Ooh. So, I need a side-by-side. -side. Who is the I, real Tim Kaine? Who is the real Tim Kaine? Either way, though, we can agree he looks like an evil cartoon villain. <sighs> you got to trust your gut instincts. You got to trust, you know. Okay, let's go to Michael in South Georgia. Oh, yes. Um, I just want to say I was absolutely disgusted with tonight's debate. Uh, Tim Kaine lied, lied, and lied some more. And the moderator would interrupt at any point. Just whenever Mike Pence hit a hot spot, the moderator would interrupt. I saw that, too. It was, it was disgusting. And um, I think all of America should wake up. I think they are. I think slowly but surely they definitely are. And, uh, you know, going back to even just these Democrat-run cities, even a lot of the, the people there now who have been suffering under these Democratic policies for all this time that are right there on the verge of civil unrest, they've been suffering, begging for some help. They're finally starting to begin to see what the real issue is and how they've been duped every year into electing the same people that promise them they're going to bring them hope and change. But really, all they're doing is lining their own pockets and selling out their own people. People are waking up. It's, it's awesome. It's great. And I hope it continues. And that's all I have to say. And thank you very much for what you guys do. Thank you, Michael. And yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people have been tweeting out. They thought that they saw Tim Kaine giving the evil eye to the moderator, like, come to me. And yeah, I mean, I, I agree that she was... Um, interrupting Mike Pence whenever he would kind of get a rhythm and allow Tim Kaine to just completely interject at all points. And he would interject when he was seeing that Mike um, Pence was really kind of making a solid point. He would just interrupt, interrupt, interrupt. It's annoying. Shut up. Yeah, I think that Mike Kaine certainly did not help Hillary Clinton at all in this debate. And, you know, just to get a, a quick plug in, Michael said that he uh, appreciates what we do. Folks, if you like what we do, Go to InfoWarsStore.com and check out our products. We've got an unbelievable product line. I, myself, am a major user of these products. DNA Force, I take that every morning and every night. I take Super Male Vitality. I think that Nason Iodine Survival Shield X2 is probably the greatest supplement I've ever taken. And I've been taking supplements for, I, I guess, over 10 years now. And that is a must-have, Nascent Iodine Survival Shield. We've also got the Hillary for Prison t-shirt that is 
a limited time T-shirt. Once the election is over, you cannot get the Hillary prison for T-shirt anymore. So we love our audience. We know that you guys appreciate what we do. Help us grow. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't even have a job here. So help us continue to grow <laughs> InfoWars. Help us to get this message out to people. Go to InfoWarsStore.com and uh, buy our products. Thanks for the call, Michael. Yes, thank you. And thank you guys out there for your support. You're absolutely right. It is because of the people out there that we can do all of this because Jones is awesome and he puts all that money back into the operation. Uh, let's go ahead and take a few more calls here. Let's go to Kyle in Oklahoma. The basket of deplorables, huh? The, um, the, um, the presentation between um, Mike Pence and um, Tim Kaine. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to bring up the fact that when they were talking about the policy of, you know, local government and how do we take out terrorism, um, why don't we focus on, like, the medical care for the participants and, you know, trying to get behavioral health for those people so that way we prevent those kind of situations in the first place so that way we don't get them to commit those kind of crimes as a, as a personal um, uh, folk that uses behavioral health, it, it got me to a point to where I can be, be able to fully control, you know, hey, you know, how am I feeling about myself versus, you know, acting out of last thing or, or, well, and, you know, what it used to do to be as in uh, examples of extreme antisocial behavior that you see on mainstream news and how Clinton News Network or CNN likes to portray and Fox News and everybody else um, but they don't talk about, like, the actual, like, solution that we can actually do in order to mitigate some of these problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I also wanted to talk about, uh, like, the best part about the debate was um, how um, Mike Pence went out and uh, and called out, you know, half Don uh, Donald Trump supporters uh, deplorables. And I was, I was just, I dropped right then and there. I was like, wow, that that was that actually meant something. But uh, <laughs> also uh, smashed upon um, Tim Kaine again, you know, by saying the um, was it the super predators mark mm -hmm. at the same time, which right. would have uh, gotten uh, Tim Kaine right then and there. Right. Uh, talk about pa painting. Well. Yeah. Talk about painting people with a broad brush. That was Hillary Clinton and her husband. Uh, with the bills that he put in place, uh, you pointed that pointed that out. How that was, you know, the war on drugs and um, the mandatory minimum mandatory sentencing. Minimum. That's Bill Clinton legislation. And then, uh, and then now the new thing Bill Clinton is saying when he gets heckled in the crowd and people are saying that, well, he's like, well, she didn't vote for it. <sighs> yeah. Well, um, also too, Kyle, you're saying that there was a missed opportunity to use the TPP. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, when. Uh, he was talking about the end of the uh, debate upon how we have this um, uh, world, you know, economy and how, you know, uh, we're going around and making trade agreements across the whole entire globe. We're not making any trade agreements. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Because we're moving all out, all the jobs from the United States as well, raising all these taxes and taking it all out and buying all this uh, thing uh, or at least creating the jobs uh, outside of the, uh, other countries because it's cheaper labor. And then we go ahead and say, oh, yeah, we want a trade agreement because we just made the jobs outside of the country so that way we could buy cheaper things to try to uh, or, or try to boost or sort of boost our economy. But instead, we're just kind of uh, putting our foot inside of our mouth by doing that. Right. Yeah, and I agree, you know, that TPP is going to be one of those really big issues because Hillary Clinton uh, and Tim Kaine were totally praising it prior to this election, and they could see how many people were completely against it, thanks to the alternative media who was actually reporting on what some of those devastating measures contained within the TPP would actually mean for this country. They were trying to sell it as the gold standard in trade deals until it got out that, no, this is not going to be a good deal for the American people. But then, of course, they flip-flopped like they've done on so many other things. We can't trust them. And I know that Bill Clinton kept trying to say that Hillary Clinton's been on the right side of history forever. Dude, she has flip-flopped on so many things that she evolved 
on, you know, abortion or gay marriage or the TPP or um, going into Libya and all, you know, why would it change? You know, looking back, I maybe would have done some things differently. Like, we don't need a president who has to flip-flop and backtrack on all of their bad decisions. She has decades of bad decisions under her belt. We can see her record. And this is a point that Hillary Clinton cannot possibly win. She's already come out strong for TPP. She can try to change her rhetoric or she can try to pretend like she doesn't like it. I think that, you know, she even knows that that's a bad move because as soon as she gets in, she's going to pass TPP. I mean, we're not we're not going to be completely fooled by this. So she cannot win this debate on the TPP. She's either a fraud, uh, you know, when she says she doesn't like it to win votes, because then she's going to be a fraud ding, ding. when she passes it, when she gets into office. Exactly. So but she she's can't gonna win have this. to do it because, you know, just looking at it, it was just, you know, the best thing for the people because she's going to have the interest of the American people at heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was the other thing is I feel like uh, Pence could have really hit him on releasing her transcripts that she has done. Wait, what happened to that? Remember how that was kind of a really big thing? I guess because Bernie Sanders was kept putting it out there. But now that sort of faded into the distance. She still hasn't released those transcripts. And she's continuing to say that she's going to hold all of these uh, banks and Golden Sacks and all of that to heal, you know, bring them to heal or whatever. But she's not going to because they own her. Well, Leanne, I mean, you can't blame Mike Pence. He only had an hour and a half to rip Hillary. I mean, you, you know, that's, you need like three days for that. That's yeah, probably that's tough. More. All right, let's move on uh, to Kyle in Oak. Uh, sorry, <laughs> thank you, Kyle in Oklahoma. <laughs> hey, no problem, guys. Thank you for you what you guys do. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on to Ken in Virginia Beach. Ken, what did you think? Is is Tim Kaine the Joker or um, the Grinch? I don't know. Will the uh, real uh, Grinch stand up? <laughs> um, just two things and then a plug. Um, the one is I'm really not surprised by uh, Tim Kaine uh, uh, interjecting and and uh, name calling and all the other crap as far as, oh, you're a big and racist. I'm just really not surprised. And if it wasn't, if he wasn't triggered any more than what he was, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd start throwing a temper tantrum like Trigley Puff. <laughs> um, the other one is, two years ago, I actually went and met Tim Kaine. And it wasn't for good reasons either. I actually got him on video on my YouTube channel. It's titled uh, Tim Kaine. I don't need to explain who I get donations from. He actually said that on my YouTube. Wow. He doesn't need to explain it to you, just an tweet average hey, uh, journalist out there. Hey, uh, go ahead and tweet that at me, Ken. We'll get that out there. Well, I, I don't have social media or anything like that, but I'd love to uh, email it to you guys. Um, well, the last one is, I know Alex Show Jones tips at Infowars.com. Show tips at Infowars.com. I'll, I'll definitely send it out. Um, the other one is, I know uh, Alex has made a comment about how a lot of people don't really care to buy the, I guess, Made in America products. I will say I have a lot of the Made in America t-shirts, and I will say they rival a lot of the name brands that are out there. They're very soft. Um, that's what I love about them. And for those that don't have them and kind of hesitate, they, they're very soft. Um, like I said, they rival uh, some of the other t-shirts that go, like, for $30. So... Yeah, I got a, I got a, the Made in 1776 Molon Labe shirt. Very, very nice. Very high quality. Yeah, I even those, uh, the, the uh, Come and Take Them shirts, that's excellent quality fabric. Oh, they are. And, and when I got the one with the, uh, I guess, the bamboo material, I was kind of surprised by it, but it's actually pretty comfortable. And it's still just as soft. So, but, um, yeah, definitely well worth it for those that are just like, eh, I don't know. No, yeah. it, it's definitely worth the money, especially at 25 bucks or even like 20 Definitely worth it. So I'll go ahead and let you guys go. You guys have a good night, and thanks for all you guys do. You too, Ken. Thank you so much. Well, I know we are probably going to be wrapping this up here pretty soon. Um, is is due back there? Did we want to play any other videos? Okay, and if anyone wants to chime in with any last comments, um, if Margaret's there or McBreen,
Um, but I think it was a really great debate overall, much more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. I think we really got to see who these uh, vice presidential candidates were. Like They are one heartbeat away. And, you know, a lot of people are thinking Tim Kaine's going to be great. Well, I think he just proved that he's going to be a total globalist shill who is going to divide this country even more and use a lot of the exact same rhetoric that we've been seeing that has been uh, dividing this country by design so that they can rape and pillage this country. Um, and we'll just all keep fighting each other rather than actually taking out the real enemy. I don't see how you come out of watching that debate thinking anything positive about Tim Kaine. I really don't see how you watched that debate and feel like Tim Kaine did anything that wooed you or that would make you feel confident in his ability to lead or confident in his integrity, unless, of course, you're an entirely brainwashed Trump hater. I thought Tim Kaine was uh, just, I, I mean, just totally weak. I mean, it was just like a a terrible performance. Well, yeah, in my, a, in my, Drudge in my called opinion. him neutered because yeah. he said he wanted to be Hillary Clinton's right hand person. But I do think <laughs> not her right hand. I do think, and um, I didn't think too much about Mike Pence uh, entering this debate. I don't know. Uh, I don't think too many people out there honestly thought too much about Mike Pence entering this debate. But I think that if anything, what Mike Pence did tonight was he showed the strength in Donald Trump's decision making. Donald Trump was the one that decided to bring Mike Pence on as his running mate, as the vice presidential candidate. Um, and he, did, he got a lot of flack for that. Nobody really expected this. A lot of people didn't like the move, including some of us here at InfoWars. Uh, we didn't think that the Mike Pence move was good. I even referred to it as a nothing sandwich at one point. But I have to say, Mike Pence was amazing tonight. I would even almost go as far to say as he was better than Trump uh, at these debates. <laughs> Obviously, this is a different stage, a different scenario, so you can't compare apples and oranges there. But I think that Mike Pence showed tonight, not just is he a good candidate for vice president, it also shows that Trump's decision making when deciding who to bring on to help him is, is a strength that Donald Trump really has, and he's exploited it in his career. He loves bringing in good people to help. And I had some people tweeting me, Leanne, that saying, well, what about the neocon you know, policies of a Trump-Pence ticket? You know what? Here's the deal. We have to prioritize in this election, and there's going to be some neocon policies that are probably going to infiltrate a Trump-Pence ticket, but we're just going to have to live with it. And just like we always do, we're going to be right, heel, uh, right here with our feet to the fire of these politicians making sure they abide by the Constitution and stick to their word. But I think that Mike Pence did a great job. I think that he just showed how Donald Trump's decision-making on who to bring in to help him is a very strong point in a Donald Trump presidency. Right. And uh, another huge victory for the uh, Trump campaign in my in my uh, verdict tonight. Yeah, I agree. And, and uh, Donald Trump has mentioned that many times. He's like, I'm a smart businessman. If I don't understand something, I'm going to get the right people in that will take care of that. And, of course, the media tried to spin that as a weakness, but I don't see that as a weakness. You can't expect everyone to know everything. Um, it was a much better answer than Gary Johnson, who said, well, I could just look it up in five seconds with my iPad. Ooh, doesn't mean I can't be president. So, well, I want to say great job to the crew. Great job to everyone out there for sticking through uh, with this vice presidential debate with us. It was much more entertaining than we thought. We are going to uh, go ahead and end the show with this Alex Jones report where he is calling out for Donald Trump to go and visit Haiti. Uh, we'll see you guys here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. But stick with us on Sunday night because we're going to be doing this all over again, taking your calls for the next presidential debate.